hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel and i am so excited that you're here with me on my first ever uh, mystery monday um i just want to apologize if you can hear some cars my bookshelves are on my living room and my living room is really near like literally right outside of one of the busiest streets we have um here in my town so um yeah like i waited to record a night when the noises outside from traffic is not that bad but i think you can still hear it but then now i just realize that i'm suffering and paying for it in lighting so i don't know maybe i'll just keep using my bedroom for now but uh please let me know in the comments below if you can hear the car and if it's distracting if this is too dark for you um just let me know and i can just uh, go back to doing my reviews and all the videos in my room and you can find like a soundproof room i don't know it is what it is the struggle is real uh but i'm learning but anyway this is my first ever mystery monday and uh this is uh the day of the week where my videos will all be about book reviews book hauls and um books that i want to read books 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 and books and um i wish i was very eclectic in my book taste but i am not i do like some classics and i've read a lot of them like growing up and i enjoy it but uh, my guilty pleasure is mystery and you know this time now i'm expanding into thrillers and suspense and horror and um, psychological thrillers well you catch my drift at least it's not just uh, you know playing golden age mystery so you know give me some props for modernizing um, i am very picky in the books i like i do tend to prefer female authors because they do represent women better but i don't know it was never something that i really thought about it's just when i started looking at my bookshelves and the books i've read and the books i enjoy and so happened that it is females now a conscious decision has been for golden age mysteries agatha christie is my absolute favorite her and i go back years ago like i was 11 when i first read um murder on the orient express given to me by my grandfather and uh i have a very deep emotional connection to her because i remember for years going to every bookstore um to get my whole collection of agatha christie was something that my grandfather and i shared and right before he and that was in portuguese i'm from brazil and right before he died um i got this whole collection from harper collins uh in english and um, he helped me get that too because you know uh, not all of those books were published in canada so i had to import some from the uk believe it or not some from um, brazil just so i have the whole i guess i could see collection in the same one and um my grandfather and i did this again together for my english collection uh surely uh before he died as well so it's uh, it reminds me of one of my favorite people and i love her books because um she draws characters like no one and some of the plot twists that she had even before plot twists was a thing she went there she was someone that wanted something and she went for it and i've learned and, and the characters it, it is from the go it's from the 20s and even up to um the 60s when she wrote some of her last books her characters was still very victorian it was different it is one of those things when you know life wasn't so complicated and um she really took me there to england in that time and i really appreciated that and poho mm, ah oh no 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 chef's kiss poho is my favorite character of all times him and i like he was part of my imaginary family but anyway so that's my taste and uh now i'm expanding i'm reading some more modern um books the one thing that uh i do not like 
is gratuitous violence and gore and sex. I don't think that has a place in the mystery. It, for me, it doesn't add or subtract. And sometimes if it's too crude, it actually takes away from my enjoyment of books. So those, um, I've never DNF'd a book in my life, but because I'm expanding now, if I DNF, it's probably because of those. Um, for my rating criteria, I just wanted to go over this and explain it here. So, you know, I'll be reading mainly like thrillers and mystery. I might expand here and there. Um, I will also keep all of my um, reviews spoiler free. If it is something that I really, really, really want to talk about the ending, I'll divide my videos in a part one, part two, and the part two will be the spoiler portion. So you don't even accidentally watch it. You have to consciously click on it to go watch it. And um, there's already some books that I've read in the past month that I know I'll be doing that because uh, I just need to talk about the ending. But for most of the other ones, I'll keep it really like um, spoiler free for you. So that's something that is important for you to know. Uh, I will be also using some criteria in order to reach my Goodreads five star. Um, I'm a math person. I'm an Excel spreadsheet person. I am... Um, someone that sometimes make things way more complicated than they need to be. So I'll go over my criteria. So, you know, uh, in future books, what I mentioned by that. So for me to really enjoy a book, especially a mystery, first and foremost, it needs to be enjoyable. So enjoyability is uh, my first criteria and I'll be grading enjoyability on a scale of zero to 10. All of them are a scale of 0 to 10. And what do I mean by enjoyability? It is uh, those books that even if the rating is low, it doesn't matter. It's like it's those books that I cannot put down. I need to know what happens. That it got me engaged, whether it's because of the characters or something, but it's just those books that I escaped when I read. I was right there. Those are the books that fulfilled me. That I didn't feel it was a waste of time. So that's uh, my criteria uh, for enjoyability. The second criteria I have, again, on a scale of um, zero to 10 are characters. I am a character heavy person. I really love books that you can understand the character. You can, the author makes all the characters very differently. And even if you cannot relate, you can empathize with the characters. I like characters to be well drawn. I don't like them to be stereotypical or pointless to the plot. I want every person in a book to matter and I want at the end of the book to know I feel them. So how well the author creates characters, that's my second criteria. My third one is what I'm calling ambiance and I don't know why I called that but I was in too deep it's basically setting so what I expect on a scale of zero to ten a book that it receives a 10 point rating for ambiance is a book that took me there time and space it is a book that it says if it is set in an isolated manner I want to feel like I'm in the house. If it is set in London, I want to feel I'm in London. If it's a 1920s book, I want to feel like I'm there in that era. So it is a book that really helps me imagine the atmosphere, how it feels like and what it looks like to be in that place. As someone, you know, because sometimes it's so easy to say, oh, modern day London, but it can't, could have really been in any city. I want the time and the place to be a character. So that's how I'm rating um, the ambiance. And those are things that matter to me. They might not matter to you, right? Uh, but uh, especially because I love mystery. Fairness or fair play is something that I really pay attention to. It is... Um, 
There's nothing I hate the most than reading a book and when you find a denouement at the end or you see a plot twist or how it's resolved and it's something that came out of the left field. It was not mentioned before, there was no clues to it in a book, it's something that the author just came up with right there on the spot and sometimes even five pages right before the end, that's when you receive that most important clue. I don't like that. I like being there in the book and I like fair play more than anything else when I'm reading a mystery. I want to know, I want a fair chance of guessing the end and if or the twist and if I did not guess, I want it to be there in writing so I can go I should have seen that coming and um, uh, if an author plays dirty they are not gonna uh, score very high on this and I know that some of the books I'm reading are not mystery so fair play is not always about the hint about the plot twist or the ending and things like that so for those books that um, don't have a mystery that will be resolved by the end what I'm using the fair play rating for is characters so whatever the characters do and the climax of the book if it is something within the character's characters if it's not something out of the character for the protagonist of the book then i will consider that it was um, a high rating in fair play but again if it's all of a sudden you're following this and it's someone's doing something and they do something that the same person in real life would never do because it's so far out of the left field just for shock value don't like that so that's how we'll adjust the fair play on books that are not mysteries and then my last two ones that i'll also be rating zero to ten are plot and execution in plot i look for unique, new, fresh books. It can be an idea that has been used before but the author was able to really think about it and give it a twist and make it new and make it their own or it is something that is completely enjoyable or really something very new that nobody has done before. So that's what I'm looking for the plot is how well do you make me want to read your book and how amazing the author's idea is and execution is how well they executed that because you know I thought long and hard about it and maybe plot and execution should be one but I've read books that uh, the plot is not innovative, innovative at all it is something that has been written so many times but the way the author just wrote it and even if they didn't make their own it was executed so well that it I rated it higher on execution than on the plot or sometimes the plot is just amazing but it was you know wasted on that one book so I have those separately and um, so those are my um, criteria so the way I'll do is I'll just add let me just count how many one two three four five I'll add those uh, six ratings I'll divide it by six and then I'll divide it by two and that's how I'll get my most accurate five star rating even though I'll probably call it five moustaches um, and uh, I have a separate criteria that is deduction so I know that it's controversial and blah 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 but uh, when you read older books there is this um, some books are stuck in their time so there are things that are really not okay for modern day age and it can make a reader uncomfortable to read those things but I try my very best to see that within the context of who wrote it and when they wrote it but there are times when I can't even look past that. So I will be making deductions depending on how cringe worthy it is and not if it is justifiable because it, it isn't. But um, if it is within its time, I won't be giving any deductions, but it, if it's uh, something that 
it was cringy even for the time or let's say it is a modern book and it is misogynistic and it's um, racist or it really doesn't draw characters well and falls within the stereotypes of anything I'll be deducting and that will affect my overall skull as well. Whew. So yes, that's how I'll be reading them and uh, it's 60 minutes so I'll try to go fast. Uh, well, I won't try to go fast, you're here to watch me, right? So this is also my first ever TBR list. I'll just uh, mentioning some of the books that I do want to read next. So those are some of the books that I'll be reviewing soon and uh, I don't have all of them here with me so the ones that I do not have I'll put in here and um, also I've been thinking about it that I know that is like the booktube thing to do to just hold the book and all the time but when I'm doing my reviews, I will try to do this, but I don't guarantee, so I apologize, you guys. Even if I have the physical book, I might be showing it to you, but just keep a picture of the book somewhere around, just because I talk with my hands. <laughs> and it is easier, and I don't want to be dropping books, and yada, 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 so. Um, oh yeah, so that's something that you should not expect from my channel, for me to be holding the book. Another thing that you should not expect from my channel is for me to be literary. I don't know. I'm a normal person that enjoys reading books. I don't know about prose. I don't know about uh, voice. I don't know about perspective. I don't know about genres. I can be speaking to you about all these amazing things that people that are amazing booktubers speak about. I'm here to give you my gut reaction and what I think about these books from a very, very lay woman. Like, so don't expect the right lingo from me. I'll try not to butcher it, but I'm here just to share the joy of reading and um, I hope that's something that you can look past. So to start, I've showed it a few times. Um, this is uh, my current to be read list. I have way more here. I also have some books that I'm either listening to on Audible. I'm planning on getting scripts soon or I get it from my local library so I don't always have all the books and like I said I'll mention those ones as well. But I've heard great things about Lucy Foley so I'm looking forward to reading um, The Hunting Party as well as The Guest List. Both of them are isolated um, mysteries which means there's a group of people that are stuck somewhere one of them is an island that's the guest list and this one is like um, a hotel resort kind of thing in Scotland and then people getting there someone dies you know that one of those people killed who done it right so um, I don't know I really like this and I've read um, good things about Lucy Foley so I'm looking forward to reading both her books. Um, the next one that I do have here and this is one that I got from the library is Perfect Days by um, Rafael Montes. It is um, I think in Portuguese is uh, Dias Perfeitos uh, but is a Brazilian young author. He's supposed to be really like mind-bending and amazing. I really wanted to read one of his other books or know how it ends, but this is one that I actually found in English. So I'm looking uh, forward to that. I have no idea what this book is about, but I know that um, I was looking to him and it was the only book I could find in English. So stay tuned for my review. Um, my first review next week is going to be The Turn of the Key, I by Ruth Ware. I absolutely loved, that was like the first book I just started and I could not put it down. I needed to know what happened. And she took me there, man. She really did. I really loved the way that she wrote. And she made me so excited for finding a new favorite author, like a modern author, that there's a chance I can actually meet one day in life because she's not dead like my other favorite authors oh my god like okay Ruth Ware Ruth Ware if you're listening to this baby girl please I'm your number one fan now 
okay and is like let's talk agatha christie let's talk life can't wait to meet you but anyway and if you write a new book i'm here but anyway so i have this one uh, to show i have the woman in cabin 10 which is her second book I've also got um, in a dark, dark wood and one by one, which is a, her most recent one. And I also have her other books coming to me. I order them. They haven't arrived yet. So basically on my to be read list is to be caught up with Ruth Ware's mysteries. And uh, stay tuned for the review. The next one is also a golden age mystery. I have an English murder by Cyril O'Hare. And uh, this is a book, again, like, I love isolated mysteries and tropes. But again, this is the middle of the winter, so it is very Christmassy. I mean, is there anything more Christmassy than murder? Maybe eggnog. Uh, but anyway, so the snow is thick, the phone line is down, and no one is getting in or out of Warbeck Hall. With friends and family gathered around the fire, all should be set for Perfect Christmas, but the bells chime midnight. A murder takes place. Who done it? Well, I wanted like it, you know, my Christmas uh, mystery book to read. At some point, um, as the list goes on, I've also heard great things about Gillian Flynn, and I have Gone Girl will be uh, the first book that I want to read by her. I'll probably read all three of them as well. I'm very intrigued. Um, everybody says she's um, she is a lot of people's uh, most favorite thriller author. So I'm including one of my best friends, Luciana. So I really I'm looking forward to. Um, see how I connect to those books. And the reason why I picked Gone Girl to be the first book I read by her is because apparently it's really popular and every time I hear anything about Gillian Flynn, I, I'm just afraid the book is gonna be spoiler, spoiled for me and I hate spoilers. So I'm gonna be reading that before I can um, live with it. Like regret not having read it and having the book spoiled. Um, don't get me wrong, I will read mysteries more than once. I think I've read each Agatha Christie book at least five or six times. And there has been books that I read more than once, even though I know who done it. But the first time I read, I read a book, I want to be immersed in it. I want to have my own opinion. You know what I mean? And, you know, I want breaking rights. Uh, the next book I have is oh another one of my new favorite authors and he happened to be a man but i read uh the magpie murders which was amazing and so meta and this is um the continuation to that so i have the moon flower murders on my to be read list as well as his other two books which is um sorry anthony horowitz other books they are two books within a series, but it's different than a series from Magpie Murders and Moonfly Murders, which is uh, The Word is Murder and The Sentence is Death. Those are also on my list. The next one that I'm really looking forward to is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Like this book is like mind freaky from what I, I heard. I'm like, I'm so intrigued by it is basically there is this character called Evelyn um, Hardcastle. What you know is that she's gonna die at the end of the day. And there's this person right there, which is the detective of the series, that every day he wakes up, he wakes up in a different body of a different character. And he has eight days, so he has eight lives or eight characters to inhabit to solve the mystery. If he does not solve the mystery of who killed Evelyn Hardcastle by the eighth day, he will start living everything back again. I don't think I, I explained it very well right now, but it's like, I'm stay tuned for my review after I read it. It sounds like an amazing concept. Um, uh, another book that I really have no idea what it is about other than it is a golden age mystery by Josephine Tay, the daughter of time, but it has been voted as one of the best mysteries of all times. So I'm really forward to looking, uh, really forward to reading this and it's quite thin. 
Another one is again another Golden Age mystery, The Red House Mystery by A. A. Milne. Milne? Milne? I don't know. Uh, but that's uh, the Winnie the Pooh author. And this is the one and only mystery he has written. But it's supposed to be amazing. And the next one I think is more into the horror kind of um, thriller. I don't know how much I'm going to like it, but I've read good things about this enough to get me intrigued, which is The Whisper Man by Alex North. And it is just uh, this dad and son move to a town after a tragic loss. And it is a town, there used to be this guy known as a whisper man that if children heard him whisper outside their windows, then they disappeared. So it is supposed to be, is the whisper man back? What's going on and things like that. So it's like one of those uh, suspenseful books. So that's it for my first TBR and the rules for my reading. I can't wait to see you here next Monday. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And uh, just let me know how much the lighting and the sound upset you. And I'll make my plan for next week. But thank you so much. And until next time, be the hummingbird. <laughs>